All right, this is your review for activities 24 and 25. So like I said in class, first thing I want you to do, if you have not already, is to read through section 24.1. Um, this section um, is called polynomial terminology. This section has all your important definitions, the first of which um, is polynomial. So right here, a polynomial is a single term or the sum of two or more terms, and here's the key, with whole number powers. It is not a polynomial if the exponents are not whole numbers. Um, so make sure you know the definition of polynomial um, and that you can identify what's a polynomial and what is not. All right. Um, then the next one I want to do goes over a lot of the other definitions. So they gave you this polynomial here, and I do know it's a polynomial because all of the exponents are whole numbers. Um, and it asked you various questions about this particular polynomial. First, it asked you to name the coefficients. So coefficient, by definition, is the number that is multiplied times a variable term. Um, so it's the numeric factor. So the coefficients here would be 5, because that's the coefficient of this term, and then negative 2, and then 8. Negative 3 is not a coefficient because it doesn't have a variable on it. This is called a constant, which actually happens to be the answer to number 5 when it asks what's, what the constant is. Number 2 asks you to list all the individual terms. So terms are separated from each other by addition and subtraction. So my first term is 5x to the fourth. The next term, you have to take the sign with it, is negative 2x squared. Then 8x and then negative 3. So this polynomial happens to have four terms. Remember that we classify polynomials by their number of terms. Um, so where was that here? Um, here it is. Um, monomials when there's one term and they give examples. Binomial has two terms. So here's a binomial, here's a binomial. Trinomial has three. A polynomial is the general term. It covers everything. A monomial is a type of polynomial. A binomial is a type of polynomial. But if it has more than three terms, we don't have another specific name for it. Um, so then it asked us for each of the terms to list the degree. By definition, the degree is the exponent on the term. So in this case, the 4 is the exponent, so that's its degree. This one, the exponent is 2. Here, there is no exponent written, so it's understood to be a 1. Here, there's no variable at all. These ones are trickier. You have to know that those are degree 0. Constants are always degree 0. Number 3 asked what the degree of the polynomial is. So the degree of a term is just its exponent. The degree of the polynomial is the highest exponent that appears. So the highest exponent in this whole thing is 4. So that's the degree. Then number 4 um, asked for the leading coefficient. The leading coefficient is the coefficient of the term with the highest exponent. So the highest exponent was 4, so its coefficient is 5, so that makes that the leading coefficient. Next thing was putting um, answers in standard form, which is important because all your answers need to be in standard form. Um, standard form just means I need to go from highest exponent to lowest exponent. So my highest exponent here is my 3, so negative 5x cubed should start. After a cubed term would come a squared term, but I don't have any, so can't do that. So I've already done this one. After squared terms come linear terms, or plain x terms, so that's this, plus 9x. And then finally, last comes the constant, so this is the standard form polynomial. After we did the definitions, we learned to add and subtract. Remember that you absolutely must have work on your review and on your quiz. So um, here, when I am adding,
adding, again, don't multiply, this is plus. Um, when I am adding, that just means identify and combine like terms. So I could do that by lining the like terms up underneath each other. So I could take this x squared and put it underneath here. This negative 5x and put it underneath the other x term. This 2, put it underneath and then add the columns. This was the vertical method. So 2x squared plus x squared is 3x squared. 3x plus negative 5x is negative 2x. And negative 1 plus 2 is 1. So this is my answer because it is in standard form and all like terms have been combined. When I look at 20, this one is subtraction. So I have to do an extra step here, which is to distribute the negative. So this becomes a positive 2y squared and a positive 3. Once I've done that, then I can choose to line them up vertically if I want, or I can use the horizontal method. I'm going to do that since I haven't done that yet. So I'm going to put boxes around my squared terms, underline linear terms, there isn't one over here, and then squiggly underline my constants. So now I just combine the ones that have the similar marks. So 8y squared plus 2y squared is 10y squared. Negative 3y doesn't have a like term, so it just stays. And then 6 plus 3 gives me 9. All right, 29. Uh, it gave you a picture somewhat similar to this. And it told you that the area of the entire thing, so this whole big rectangle that I'm outlining in blue, the whole area there is 16x squared minus 5x plus 2. The play areas area, so the inside here that's in red, was given as this. And what it wanted was the area of the sidewalk, so this right here. So this is a subtraction problem. I need to take 16x squared minus 5x plus 2, and I need to subtract 10x squared plus 3x minus 1. Now again, it's subtraction, so my first step should be to distribute the negative sign. So I'm changing all the signs because I distributed it here. And now I can combine the like terms. So x squared, x squared, linear, linear, constant, constant. So that gives me 6x squared minus 8x for the linears, and then plus 3. And that should be my answer. Last one of the addition and subtraction um, was number 30. So it told you that they took a piece of cardboard and they cut out squares from each of the corners um, so that they could fold it up and make a box. It said the area of the box without the corners was this guy, and that each corner had this area and it wanted to know what's the area of the original piece before you cut it up. So that means you just need to take the no corners and add all the corners back in. So 28x squared plus 12x plus 32, and then I'm going to add 2x squared plus 3, and there are four corners, so you have to add that four times. Now, it is perfectly fine if you wrote like plus 4 times 2x squared plus 3 distributed and then combined like terms. That's perfectly acceptable. But here, since it was in the adding and subtracting, I just decided to do it that way. So this is 30 plus 6, so 36x squared. The x didn't have anything to combine with, so plus 12x. And then this is 35, 38, 41, 44. So that would be the area of the original. All right, last thing that we did is learn how to multiply um, polynomials. So we did that with two different methods. We learned FOIL, so that's what I'm going to demonstrate here in number five. So remember FOIL, F-O-I-L, first, outside, inside, last. So firsts, 2y times 3y. 2 times 3 is 6. y times y is y squared. Outsides, so outsides would be here, 2y times negative 8, so that's negative 16y. Insides here, 
negative 18y when I take negative 6 times 3y. And then finally, last, negative 6 times negative 8, which is positive 48. You are not done once you FOIL. You still need to combine any like terms that you have, which in this case would be these ones in the middle. So 6y squared stays negative 16 plus negative 18, so they have the same sign here, gives me negative 34, so negative 34y, and then bring down my plus 48. So that would be your work and answer if you FOIL. On number six, I'm going to review the box method. Remember, you should get the exact same answer if you do it with the box versus do it with FOIL. It should not matter which way you do it. For the box method, you just need to make sure that you have a row for each term on the first polynomial. So 4x is one term, 3 is another, and then a column for each term in the other polynomial. So x, and then make sure you take the sign with it. If it's negative, you need to write negative. So now I just do row times column. So 4x times x is 4x squared. 4x times negative 11 is negative 44x. 3 times x is 3x. 3 times negative 11 is negative 33. So again, don't forget to combine your like terms. I've got some there. So 4x squared I bring along. Negative 44 plus 3 is negative 41x, and then minus 33. 10 and 11, these are the ones that I taught you the shortcuts for because number 10 is a sum and difference pattern, meaning the parentheses are the same except for the signs. So the shortcut is to take whatever the first term of both parentheses is and square it, then do a minus, and then take whatever the second term is and square it. So you do not have to FOIL or box this. Now if you do, you should get the same answer, but you don't have to. So first term is 2x. If I square 2x, now you don't have to write this. I'm okay with you doing this in your head, but when I square this, I get 4x squared because exponent rules tell me I have to square everything inside. And then minus, my second term is 5 and I have to square that. So 5 squared is 25, so I get 4x squared minus 25. Notice the difference between that and what I have here in number 14. Number 14, this is a square of a binomial, which means to multiply 2y minus 3 times itself. So again, you're welcome to FOIL or box it if you want, but you don't have to. The shortcut is to take the first term squared, so in this case, 2y when I square it is 4y squared. In the middle, since this is a minus, this will be a minus. And then it's 2 times the first term times the second term. So 2 times 2y, which is 4y, times 3, which is 12. So minus 12y. I already decided the sign, so I don't need to worry about it later. And then plus whatever my second term is, squared. So in this case, 3 squared, which is 9. Again, you're more than welcome to foil it or box it. You should get the exact same answer. But on square of a binomial, there should be a linear term. On a sum and difference pattern, there should not. The linear terms would cancel. All right, just a few more left. 18 I wanted to do because it's the only one that has a monomial times a polynomial. So here, I, all I have to do is distribute. So 2x times x squared is 2x cubed. 2x times negative 3x is negative 6x squared. 2x times 2 is 4x. This one doesn't have any work other than your little lines there. 20 and 25, um, I would recommend the box method for. You are allowed to distribute, but remember that if you are distributing, you have to distribute the y to all three terms and then the negative 5. So I prefer to do anything that has more than two terms with a box. Um, again, that's personal preference. You don't have to do it that way. Um, so 1, 2, 3... So my terms up here are 4y squared, 5y, and 2. So y times 4y squared is 4y cubed. y times 5y is 5y squared. y times 2 is 2y. 
and then I start on the second row. Negative 5 times 4y squared is negative 20y squared. Negative 5 times 5y is negative 25y. Negative 5 times 2 is negative 10. And so then I just combine like terms. So I've got y squareds here. I've got y's here. These two don't have like terms, so I just bring them along. 4y cubed. Negative 20 plus 5 is negative 15, so negative 15y squared. Negative 25 plus 2 is negative 23y. And then my minus 10 that comes along for the ride also. And this is my final answer. Again, make sure that on all of these that your answers are in standard form. Highest exponent to lowest exponent. All right, last one. This is the one where you have three. So this is two steps. You've got to multiply the first times the second. Then take that answer times the third. So you can FOIL or you can box. It doesn't matter. I'm going to FOIL. So x times x is 7x squared. x times negative 1 is negative x. Negative 1 times 7x is negative 7x. And last, negative 1 times negative 1 is positive 1. So when I combine the like terms and from multiplying the first two only together, this is what I got. Now I need to take that answer and multiply it times my x plus 2. So if I make a box for that, since it has more than two terms, x and 2's. x times 7x squared is 7x cubed. x times negative 8x is negative 8x squared. x times 1 is x. This one gives me 14x squared. 2 times negative 8x is negative 16x. 2 times 1 is 2. Here's that. Here's that. So 7x cubed. These give me 6x squared. Negative 16 plus 1 is negative 15x. And then plus 2. And that is my final answer. So pretty short. Uh, again, the quiz will be very short. Um, I've tried to pick, you know, one of each type, the shortcut kind, the one where there's three. Um, so make sure you practice by doing. It, it helps a little to watch me, but it is much better to do it yourself until you can get it right on your own. Happy studying!